Okay, hello and welcome to the next video in our series. And this is potentially the most important video of all of them. Um, it's, it's a bit of a miscellaneous topic, but to be honest, what I'm going to cover in this video applies across the board to essentially every single question that comes up in the uh, quant side of GMAT. Um, effectively, it's an overall guide to how I like to approach questions. Um, particularly the difficult ones. You may have noticed uh, during my uh, sort of covering of the example videos prior to this, um, when I find a question difficult, or even, even before that, to be honest, um, when I read a question, I'm not thinking about how to uh, answer the question straight away. Um, really, all I'm trying to do, and this is if you just take one thing away from this guide, this is probably the main thing to take away. Um, all I'm trying to do is translate um, the problem into simple maths. Um, and that's what I, what I do before worrying about what the question is actually asking um, or anything like that. So whenever you see a new question, instead of just thinking to yourself, okay, how do I answer this? Uh, all you want to do is say, okay, what does each sentence mean? Don't, don't read through the whole question um, without writing anything down. Just go sentence by sentence, line by line, and try and actually really extrapolate everything you can and write it in the most simple form. For example, what I, what I mean by that, you know, a very good example of that, is if I see in, in one of the example questions I saw earlier, I saw this, uh, and I know that regardless of what the question is going to be, before I want to actually, you know, think about what the question's asking, I look at this line and I say, okay, that is not in the best form. What is the translation of this line? Well, it's a factorized version of 450. Uh, so it's, uh, 2 times 3 squared times 5 squared y and then equals uh, cubic so multiples of 3 and so that's sort of what I think um, just and it's very important that I didn't include the question here I'm just saying that uh, that's that's what I think when I look at these sort of lines um, and this, this tactic will be um, much more easily demonstrated during uh, the next, the following example video uh, based, based on word problems, work problems, etc. cetera. Um, but it's just something I wanted to have a video on to say that uh, effectively one thing you want to practice on every single question is just translate it into algebra um, and really extrapolate what every sentence means. And then once you've done the translation, if you get good at this skill, and it is a difficult skill to uh, work on, as you'll see in the um, uh, next video, but you should see that it pays off um, hugely because once you've actually got good at translating, you fully translate what the information they give you in the question actually means. If you then and only then start thinking about what the answer is, what the question being asked actually is, you'll usually find that either the question's done or it's much, much simpler. And so, just hopefully that makes sense. If you're not clear entirely on what I mean by the translation method, uh, pay attention to the approach I have for word problems in the next example video and work rate problems. And to be honest, just a lot of topics across the board. Um, just make sure that when you go into questions, uh, your first goal is not just to read the question and solve it. It's just to translate. And what that, what that does, along with making the questions easier, it also makes them um, a lot less intimidating. If your first goal is just translate the question, that's a lot easier than just um, saying, okay, how the hell do I solve this? Uh, you're not worried about how to solve the question. You're just worried about trying to translate it. And then once you've successfully done that, often the question is much easier. Um, so it's just sort of a kind of psychological trick there. Uh, and this is actually the same kind of advice I give to uh, students taking very difficult maths exams, you know, um, Oxbridge level type things, uh, where the questions are designed such that, you know, you might have 45 minutes per question. And when you first read them, there's no way you're going to know what to do. And so in that kind of situation, you need to have a method to uh, make some progress. Um, and so 
what you're supposed to do is just sort of start by asking yourself, well, what can I do? And the answer to that is just start translating what they've told you. And that works equally well in the GMAT um, and is just a much nicer way of approaching maths exams in general, I find. So hopefully that video makes sense. If you're still not quite clear what I mean by the translation method, uh, that's okay. I'll show you in the next video, but just essentially keep this in mind throughout every single uh, quant question you do. Um, problem solving and especially data sufficiency. Uh, it's it's probably the main trick for data sufficiency. So that's the end of this video. Um, we'll go through examples in the next one. Uh, but yeah, hopefully you can keep that in mind.